Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel. As we've already started with management case studies, we're going to move forward in this lesson as well. And we're going to discuss a lot of case studies in this lesson, in this session as well. If you've not subscribed to the channel, do it now so that you don't miss out on the amazing videos, amazing, amazing lessons that I'm creating for the upcoming RBI as well as SEBI examinations. If uh, you're a serious aspirant and want to revise, you can do so with me by enrolling in the crash course through which I'm helping a lot of students revise very extensively, very rigorously to ensure that they're utilizing these 53 days in the best possible manner and uh, maximizing their chances of getting selected in the examination. So let us start with the session with the first case study. The case study about is about Bob's Big Boy. We've already uh, read about this restaurant uh, mini chain case study and I'm here again to discuss about this case study. Uh, we'll be taking another set of questions based on, the, based on this case. You can pause the video, you can go through the case study again, you can uh, understand why I have highlighted some keywords and key sentences and then we will move forward with the question. The question is, in the above case, Bob's big boy is following which of the following theories of management? A very good, very classic question using a lot of jargons, a lot of old and new theories, which might actually uh, go over your head and make you feel that you don't know anything about management. The first one is resource based theory, transaction cost theory, transactional analysis theory, and the fourth is price theory. These are the four options that we have. Before jumping to the answer, let me take you through all these four theories one by one and then we will come to the answer. The first one is resource based view or resource based theory which says that an organization can uh, or has two kinds of resources tangible and intangible and if these resources are useful and differentiable then the organization can use VRIO that is if the resources are valuable, rare, costly to imitate, that is I, and O, that is organized to capture value. If the resources have all these four qualities, then the organization has competitive advantage. Nowhere in the question has uh, the case talked about resources that the organization is using, whether these resources are differentiable, variable, rare, costly to imitate, so on and so forth. Therefore, this is not our answer. The second theory is transaction cost theory, which was given by Ron Ronald Coes. And according to Ronald Coes, uh, there are different kinds of transaction costs which help us determine whether to produce something or whether to outsource it. So you have to make a decision between outsourcing an activity or doing it yourself. And these are the three major transaction costs which you use to compare whether to make it yourself or whether to outsource. Number one is search and information costs, which say that the cost incurred in identifying possibilities for mutual gains. So when you are incurring certain costs in researching or identifying whether a gap exists, identifying whether any possibility exists, then those kinds of costs come under search and information cost. Second is bargain and decision cost, that is cost associated with negotiating an agreement. So when you're outsourcing, you're certainly making a lot of negotiations with the opposite party. When you're making something for uh, by yourself, there also when you're hiring people, you're negotiating, you're bargaining, when you're uh, getting the raw material, you're bargaining. So there are a lot of bargaining and decision costs involved. So you compare these costs for both whether to produce or whether to outsource. And then you have policing and enforcement cost, policing and enforcement cost, which make sure that all parties stick to the agreement and uh, all the uh, uh, all the enforceable enforcement costs are complied with, whether you are producing something yourself or whether you are outsourcing. And these costs also exist in both the cases. You compare both these costs and see whether uh, the cost in making it yourself is higher or whether the cost in outsourcing it is higher or lower and then you come to a conclusion. So this again, um, not connected with the case at all. So second option is also out. The third is transactional analysis, which is a behavioral uh, uh, theory, which says that uh, 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 a social, it's a social psychological factor, which talks about or which 
aims to identify the ego states of individuals to understand their behavior. So it un tries to identify where an individual lies, what kind of personality an individual has, and based on that, you predict the person's behavior. So if a person, uh, so there are different, different, uh, uh, approaches to transactional analysis you can use Johari window you can use ego states which has adult child and parent ego states you can use life positions I am okay you are not okay I am okay you are okay I hope you have read through these and you'll, you can use a lot of other models as well I hope you understand what I'm saying or what I mean by transactional analysis it was given by Eric Byrne and the focus was on forecasting or understanding the behavior of an individual based upon his personality traits okay now all these three are certainly not our answers and therefore first three are out and so we are left with only the fourth one which is price theory which says that price is dependent upon demand and supply so if the supply goes up the demand stays the same the price goes down and uh, there are a lot of combinations that can be made it's a very simple theory the demand supply theory also talks about the same thing so the answer is price theory because here the demand for hamburgers in thailand did not exist therefore it, they cut out the supply they identified what the demand is and they produced what was being demanded and they sold it out very easily so that's how private price theory works a very interesting question that was uh, we learned a lot of uh, new concepts as well let's come to the second question you can pause the video, go through the case study, and then I will come to the question. These are the keywords. You can go through the keywords as well once again. The question is, according to the trait theory of leadership, which of the following traits are suitable to describe Mr. Croc? So what kind of a personality, what kind of a leadership style does Mr. Croc has? Vision and foresight? Yes, he did have vision and foresight because he identified the importance of the model followed by mcdonald's well in advance and he bought them out and he made billions of dollars out of that inner motivation drive yes he did he did have a lot of inner motivation and drive physical features have we talked about physical features of mr Krog at all no and have they mattered no open mind and adaptability yes he did have an open mind that's why he was able to uh, have a vision in mind that this is what people are going to adapt to this is what people are going to move to so I should also try and adapt to the future as well fairness and objectivity have we talked about objectivity of Mr. Croc at all no we have not have we talked about the fairness in his behavior no we have not so the answer is B 1 2 and 4 I'm going a little fast because I'm assuming that you understand these things a very simple uh, uh, case and a very simple question which depends purely upon your understanding of what leadership is and how traits can be described you can go through the explanations here as well a uh, similar question again you can go through it if you want to go through it again and the question is based on values and thoughts that mr croc passes on that is the last set of keywords key sentences which of the following type of leadership best describes him democratic autocratic transactional or transformational he is a transformational kind of leader and I very sure you would have been should have been able to identify it because he is bringing change in the entire restaurant industry. He is leading change and innovation in the industry. So transformational leader is one who leads change, who motivates his employees or people who are in touch with him, who breaches resistance lot of resistance exists when you're trying to do something new who's able to persuade the people who are in touch with him and through his last sentences set of sentences we can very well very well conclude that he was very persuasive who can influence his subordinates of people who follow him and who has no problem in engaging with people so these are all qualities of a transformational leader and everything in uh, mr croc style uh, directly talks about directly concludes helps us conclude that he was a transformational leader the fourth question is Ray Kroc sets an example for transformational leader under which theory of leadership does transformational leadership fit in behavioral emerging approaches trade theory or situational theory 
So transformational leadership is a part of emerging theories on leadership, if you don't know that. So there are the oldest ones, which are trade theories. Uh, then we had the behavioral theories. Then we had the situational theories. Then we had the contingency theories. And now we have the emerging approaches to leadership and transformational leadership is the latest one. Therefore, a part of emerging approaches to leadership. Let's come to the last question from today. Jake Harvey, uh, we've already talked about this case study in the past as well. I'm going to provide you another question that can be created from this. You can pause the video and go through this case study on your own as well. Uh, the keywords have been highlighted for you. The question is Jake attempts to change the traditional organizational structure of the company for major improvements. Which of the following terms is used in management to refer to redesigning of the organizational process? So very beautifully, the case has been connected with concepts of management and the concepts of management that have been talked about here are number one, organizational structuring, business process restructuring, transformational process and business process re-engineering. Okay. Now what has happened in the case is that the uh, organization has identified that its processes, its structures, everything is obsolete and in order to stay in competition, it has to change the way it functions and therefore it hires or it asks its employee Jake to lead the change, uh, uh, the entire uh, process of change and to identify and to recommend what kind of change is required in the organization. Now that kind of activity is called as business process re-engineering. Re There's nothing called as organizational structuring when you're trying to re-engineer or change business process. Business process restructuring is the same as business process re-engineering. This word in fact does not exist and transformational process. I have just uh, changed the word of transformational leadership and made it a tra transformational process. So this also does not exist. So the only existing concept in management is business process re-engineering. BPR refers to an attempt to improvise the operation of business on a broad scale. The primary aim is to cut down process, process redundancies and enterprise costs. A lot of steps, a lot of steps are involved. A lot of tools can be used in order to uh, uh, make BPR a reality and you can go through them here as well. I've discussed BPR in my enrolled uh, course as well uh, when we talked about uh, the entire activity of restructuring your business. Okay. Uh, so this was all about this particular session. We took five questions. Uh, you learned a lot of new concepts. You heard about a lot of new concepts, which I'm sure you would want to Google after this session and understand and make some notes so that you are more thorough and uh, you're more clear about those, these concepts as well. I hope you liked the lesson. If you did, do not forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on the future videos because I'm going to come out with a lot of videos. I'm already coming out with a lot of sessions uh, which are going to help you directly or indirectly in your preparation for the examination. Okay, all the very best. See you very soon. Uh, take care, uh, keep studying and uh, keep discussing these things in the feedback session as well as in the comment section.